Steve, first of all, how will 2013 shape up in terms of ICANN? 2013 is shaping up to be a pretty interesting year. Uh, Fadi has been on board now for uh, three months, a little over three months since he first started. Uh, we've made some uh, fairly strong uh, organizational changes and uh, brought in some strong people. And, and much more important, I think, is uh, very strong engagement with the community at all levels, with governments, with stakeholders, um, and uh, off to a very positive start. Um, a couple of quite obvious things are going to be uh, looming uh, this year. The new GTLD program uh, has been underway. We have uh, all the applications were received and the evaluation process was started. And this year will be uh, when we begin to see the results of that. We'll see the uh, narrowing of the uh, set of strings that are approved and we will see some of the strings uh, toward the end of the year I think actually approved and perhaps delegated into the route and so it'll be interesting to see the um, how all that comes out and, and what, what kind of moves are made. So that's one big area. Another is that uh, as I alluded the uh, in engagement with the community at every level. Uh, governments of course but also uh, stakeholders, both uh, contracted parties and non-contracted parties, um, community in every effort, uh, in every respect. So as we saw last year, there was a, an initiative in Africa, and that's part of a much larger uh, plan, which is uh, uh, shaping up and unfolding. And over the course of this year, we will see uh, a series of steps that uh, will lead to, I think, um, uh, a much deeper and uh, um, uh, substantive engagement, as I said, uh, internationally. There's been a lot of controversy within the community as to whether or not we are married to that 1,000 limit as to the number of new GTLDs we can delegate each year. Can you tell us about that? That's a very interesting question. Um, the, uh, I, was, I was involved in some portion of the discussions that led to that. Uh, so. Um, I can speak with some direct knowledge as opposed to just sitting on the board or, or chairing the board. Uh, there were, I think, basically two broad concerns. Uh, with respect to the root server system itself, uh, whether or not the, uh, there were any technical issues that might show up in terms of uh, allocating names at a faster rate than that. And then the other question, uh, was whether or not the administrative processes, the approval processes and all of the paperwork and the different departments inside of ICANN and the coordination to the extent that any is necessary with the U.S. government uh, and so forth, uh, might or might not have the capacity to operate uh, more quickly than that. And I think there was a, an abundance of caution in every direction with some of the concerns in one area by one group being about the other group and vice versa and so forth. Um, I suspect, but I do not want to, uh, to suggest that there will be a change, but I suspect there is plenty of capacity to increase that somewhat if it were necessary to do so. Let me ask you this. Uh, ICANN has taken in about $355 million from those GTLD application fees. I understand the board has made some decisions as to what's going to happen to that money. We, uh, we're very, very conscious of the need to be uh, uh, cautious and uh, careful in the handling of those funds. And uh, we've articulated uh, some important principles. One key principle is that those funds are, uh, were received for the purpose of running the GTLD program. And um, we want to be very careful to account for those funds and not uh, have them uh, merged in or confused with our normal operational budget. So we've set up a, uh, a parallel uh, reporting system. It's not a separate accounting system, but within the accounting system we've set up separate reporting uh, and managing of those funds so that we know where every dollar is going and uh, can account for it. Uh, with respect to the management of this pile of cash, which is um, attracts a lot of attention, $355 million. Uh, we've made a point of saying we need, this, we need to manage this with the following three priorities. The most important one is the preservation of the uh, capital. So we do not want to speculate with it. And we want to be 
as conservative, ultra conservative as possible. And closely related to that is we need liquidity because the uh, use of these funds will be over a relatively short period of time. These are not long-term investment things. Consistent with both of those is whatever return uh, in addition to preserving the capital we can get is fine. But as I say, that's a tertiary uh, concern. Uh, we went through a considerable amount of, of uh, discussion and deliberation uh, about where to park that money and how to manage it while, while it's under our control. Uh, we selected a, um, uh, an, investing, an investment consulting firm, uh, Bridge Bay, Bridge Bay Investment Consulting, to advise consistent with the policy that the Finance Committee uh, has recommended. Uh, it involves uh, spreading the money across multiple conservative um, types of instruments. It involves multiple managers of the funds. Um, and, uh, and as I say, very careful uh, management of and, and very forthright and distinct reporting of the results, both in terms of what's happened with the funds that we've taken in and with respect to the expenditures that, that are accrued against those funds. What about the Registrar Accreditation Agreement, the RAA? Where are we on that? So the RAA, the Registration Accreditation Agreement, has uh, been a subject of uh, extended um, and sometimes um, um, I'll call it vigorous uh, interactions between the registrars and the ICANN staff with uh, key members of the community, uh, law enforcement and privacy groups and others, uh, being very concerned about major elements. Um, that negotiation is nearing completion. Um, key element in that negotiation has been uh, trying to improve the, that agreement from the perspective of the law enforcement community. Uh, law enforcement community has had uh, a dozen uh, specific requests and at last reading, uh, the report is that 11 and a half out of their 12 uh, requests have uh, reached agreement on. Um, uh, we had pressed very hard last year for uh, active uh, pro forward progress, made a lot of forward progress, didn't reach conclusion. Uh, Fadi's come in and has uh, redoubled the effort. He's, he's understood the importance of uh, getting that agreement under control and um, uh, putting things on a, on a positive basis that is best for everybody. We certainly need the cooperation of the registrars, there's no question. This is the, uh, they are the principal actors and this is not only their bread and butter, but we are also, we and the entire community is dependent upon them. Uh, so it's not adversarial in the sense that it's us versus them, it's a, it's a cooperative arrangement. and. Um, uh, expect to see uh, some positive results fairly quickly. Let's talk about meetings. The next one obviously is in Beijing. What has the board decided about meetings after that? In 2013, we started our, our first meeting in Beijing. We've uh, had already announced and have made arrangements for our second meeting to be in uh, Durban, South Africa. And uh, we made the decision recently that the uh, last meeting of the year will be in Buenos Aires in Argentina. Uh, we also looked ahead and uh, uh, here's where things get a bit interesting. There had been some discussion about changing our strategy of where to hold meetings uh, and what uh, has sometimes been called a, a hub strategy. Um, we did not reach conclusion on that uh, and uh, there will be considerably more discussion of, about that over the coming year. However, as it turns out, uh, under the existing policy of rotating through the five regions, um, uh, Europe, Asia, and, and uh, North America w were scheduled to come up uh, for um, 2014. And under the possible hub strategy, we had selected uh, Singapore and London as two of the possible hub cities. So we have the benefit of being able to proceed through 2014 in a way that is consistent with either discussion, either the existing uh, policy that we've operated on for several years or the proposed new uh, strategy. What I think is um, likely to happen is that we will use the time. We're going to meet in Singapore, we're going to meet in London, and we'll meet in some place to be determined in North America. And, at, and during this period, we will also 
revisit um, the set of issues that we had been discussing about uh, where best to hold meetings. And it's, it's surprisingly more complicated. Uh, we have a very deep uh, uh, commitment to uh, working with the underdeveloped regions. And um, from one perspective, it's harder to hold meetings there. From another perspective, it is exactly, uh, w it would seem, the right thing to do in order to embrace and, en and encourage uh, engagement there. And yet, uh, when one digs into those issues a little more uh, um, deeply, um, it isn't clear whether or not it actually serves the best uh, need, the needs and, and, uh, uh, of each of those regions. And it's just a bit, it's still a bit murky, frankly. And so uh, we're looking, as I say, we really do care about it a lot. It's not just a question of uh, optimizing the amount of money or uh, ease of travel. Um, it's a question of how do we do the right thing, and, and we're going to look very closely at that. And as I said, we have the fortunate um, uh, 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 sequence that in 2014, the places that we would ordinarily go to fit into the possible shift, and so that gives us a little bit of, of time to think through uh, how we're going to evolve the next set of meetings. Steve, thanks. My pleasure.